you would really have let them marry? If you've told me anything, Miss Hayward, it's that a young woman has a right to choose her own destiny. I would respect whatever choice she made, even if it pained me. Just as I must respect yours. What is your future husband like? Is he handsome? Some would say. And kind. I do hope he is kind. He is kindness itself. I'm so sorry M Mr. Parker isn't here yet. I can't think what is keeping him. Oh. And now our other guests are arriving. What are we to do? I'm certain he will return soon, Mary. And in the meantime, rest assured, I shall play host in his stead. Oh, thank you, Arthur. Lord Montrose. Ah, Your Grace, Lady Lydia. How radiant you all look. Your Grace, Lady Lydia, Harry. May I introduce my mother? So it is true. She is your mother. There is not a doubt in my mind. Well, this is both, sir. Uh, unexpected and delightful. I am indeed pleased to meet you. I could not wait to meet you all properly, most especially Harry. Uh, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, it is customary to address the Duke as your grace. But he is to be my daughter's husband. Well, let's not split hairs, Mrs. Miss, Miss Harmon. Oh, you're not married, how original. When you asked me to stay for dinner, I would never have guessed you had this in mind. <laughs> had I known you'd be here, I would have had Cook prepare a banquet. Ah, oh, this is infinitely preferable. There's no finer meal than a lot of forage. Mm. Oh, I suspect you rarely venture below stairs. You seem to be under the misconception that I am inherently grand. My parents were not wealthy. Then you met Lord de Clermont. Oh. He was not wealthy either, or kind. We married in circumstances not unlike those your niece finds herself in now. Hence your concern for her. By the age of 30, I was a widow, with nothing to my name besides a title. That's why I pray for a happier outcome for Augusta. And why you've since sworn off love and marriage. It's getting late. I've kept you too long. Must you leave? Forgive me. You're forgiven. 